In this video, I'll help you get started using some of Fiddler's most important features. Feel free to play along. First, install Fiddler. Installation is simple. Go to fiddler2.com and click Get Fiddler. Click the version of Fiddler you want. Save and run the installer. Agree to license terms. Pick your installation folder. And you're done. Next, start Fiddler. This is the main Fiddler UI. On the left is the Web Sessions list. It displays the list of web sessions captured by Fiddler. Fiddler can capture sessions from any program that enables an HTTP proxy, but by default, it hooks up to WinINET, which is the HTTP stack used by Internet Explorer and many Microsoft applications, including Office. If we load a page in the browser, Fiddler captures sessions from the browser. When you double click on a session in the session list, Fiddler opens the session inspector for that session on the right. The inspectors tab shows details for the web session. The request appears at the top and the response on the bottom. Within the inspectors tab, both the request and response section feature several tabbed views that show formats for the session data. For the request, the default view is the headers tab. This displays information about the request headers in different formats. To view the raw headers in plain text form, click the raw tab. This displays the raw bytes that were sent out over the wire. You can even view the bytes themselves by clicking hex view. For the response, you can also view the headers. A text view of the body of the response. A syntax view that highlights the response body according to type-specific rules. An image view for images. A hex view. A web view that provides a quick preview of how a given response may appear in a browser. A caching view, which pulls information about the caching headers on the response. An auth view, which will show any authentication headers. A cookies view, which analyzes the P3P statement, if there is one present. A raw view, that will display the plain text of the response. The JSON view, which displays a JSON tree view of the response body, if possible. The XML view, which will display an XML formatted tree for the response body, if possible. And the transformer view, which will add or remove compression or encoding to view the impact on responses. There are other top-level tabs, like the Statistics tab. Here, you can view the number of requests and information about them. To see an example, let's clear the Sessions list and refresh the Fiddler homepage using Control F5. Now, we can see traffic for the Fiddler homepage appear in the Web Sessions list. If we select all the sessions, we can see in the Performance tab that there are 29 requests and a certain number of bytes sent and received. 
You can view the bytes broken down by content type, view a chart of the traffic, and more. The Statistics tab is a good place to start profiling the performance of your website. The Autoresponder tab allows Fiddler to respond on behalf of the web server. This is useful for determining whether the client can correctly handle a server response. You can also use it to replay web traffic without access to the target server and modify rules used to generate the responses. The Composer tab builds a raw HTTP request. Here, you can drag and drop an existing request, modify the request, and re-execute the request. The Fiddler Rules file is a JavaScript file containing methods that extend Fiddler's UI or modify requests or responses. You can open the Rules file by clicking the Rules menu and selecting Customize Rules, or by installing the Rules tab add-on, which creates a Fiddler Script tab. The Fiddler Script tab opens the rules file in the Fiddler Script Editor. The Fiddler Script Editor provides a syntax highlighted view of the Fiddler rules. It contains commands extending Fiddler's UI or modifying requests and responses. Here, you can change requests or headers, return a response to a request automatically, and much more. The Quick Exec box allows you to quickly specify a command. For example, we can set a breakpoint by typing BPU and a string to match against the target sessions. Let's choose CSS and hit Enter. Now that we've set a breakpoint rule, we can reload the page in the browser with Control F5. and see paused requests in the web sessions list. If we double click the pause session in the sessions list, we get the option to break on response or run to completion. If we click run to completion, the response is passed on as normal. If we choose break on response, Fiddler allows you to change or modify the response before sending it to the browser. Here, the response is encoded, so we need to decode it to view the response body in the Inspectors tab. If we delete the CSS from response and run to completion, we can see the difference in the appearance of the site. To turn off the breakpoint, enter BPU in the Quick Exec box. The Fiddler Help menu allows you to check for new versions, submit feedback, and view help articles about Fiddler. There's a constantly expanding set of help topics, videos, and discussions for everyone, from the beginning Fiddler user to the virtuoso. Connect with our worldwide community of fans and find out all the ways Fiddler can change the way you work. Thanks, and welcome to Fiddler.